بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآل الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الله وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء ونظمك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم Following our uh, previous discussions about Islamic theory of education so inshallah from tonight for maybe two three sessions we talk about manners that teachers should observe in classroom based on Munyatul Murid by the late uh, Shahid Sani. So basically this book is about teachers, students, and also about those who give fatwa and you know mujtahideen who give fatwa. That's another part of the book. When it comes to teachers and students, he calls muallim and muta'allim. So there are things that are common. Teachers and students should observe. There are things which are only for teachers and there are things which are only for students, okay? For example, ikhlas is for both teachers and students. Uh, but what we want to discuss is something it is just for the teachers, you know, what a teacher should do in the classroom or even from the time that you depart home. And then inshallah, if we have time, we will also discuss what teachers should do with respect to their students. Uh, so when it comes to what they should do with respect to the class, uh, the title is this, Al-Qismu Thalith, Adabuhu Fi Darsih. And according to the edition that I am using, it is page 204, but there are different editions of the book. Salamu Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yes, welcome. 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 So, uh, Shaykh Dasani starts. The first thing that he mentions about adabuhu fi dars and manners that teachers should observe with their teaching, with their classroom. The first one is that. We need to always remember that when we go for teaching, we should be fully prepared because uh, it's about the life of you know people. Their time is very precious. Plus, you know, sometimes people waste their time, but we, as religious people, you know. We shouldn't, you know, say, okay, because they are going to waste their time, for example, you know, uh, on, I don't know, bus or, you know, watching, you know, things which are not useful. So class is not also important, even if they get 20%, 30%. No, we should set up a good example of being responsible. Plus, we are, because, uh, you know, religious people, we should be better than, you know, teachers of other subjects, yeah? We have to be very careful and give them uh, full respect by preparing ourselves. If I don't prepare myself and go and give lecture or you know go to class, means I'm not respecting my audience. Mm -hmm. And Allah is certainly going to ask me, you know, what did you do with this opportunity, with this blessing and with this responsibility? So Shahid Thani says, your preparation has different aspects, in my words. Partly, you have to prepare yourself by being able to deliver the subject. If I am not qualified to teach a certain subject, I should not accept to teach. And even if I am qualified, Still, I need for uh, to prepare for every time that I go. Yeah, maybe you have taught a subject many times, but every time you should prepare yourself. Maybe you need less time, but you have to review the book. You know, see what new things are available. Uh, prepare for questions that may come. 
Plus, even your appearance should be suitable. You know, with the same dress that you go to uh, shopping or you know you go to I don't know park, maybe that dress doesn't suit classroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he says the first thing is not to go for lessons unless he or she is completely prepared. And this includes your dress is important. Also, your heya, you know, your mm, movements of body, you know, and hand, eyes, all are important. To be very clean in your dress and body. Uh, he says, if, for example, of course, these four sisters might be uh, different, but he says, white dress is uh, you know recommended because there is a hadith that Amir al said cotton and cotton the natural color of cotton is white uh, but uh, it's not, uh, yeah. yeah, it depends also on the orf of, you know, the place and such. It's not that you say, you know, I should have very luxurious or very expensive, uh, you know, clothes. No. Something which is dignified, and people want to get close to you, okay? Uh, in Usul al kafi there are lots of hadith about this. Actually, Usul al kafi has a section. Kitab wa tajammule wal muru'ah. This section is about your appearance, how to beautify yourself and how to have noble character. But not, he doesn't talk about virtues, it's about manners and adab in Usul al So he says we don't uh, then need to discuss it. But uh, for example, it is when it comes to men, for example, to be careful about their appearance, about beard, etc. And then he says, this is also interesting. Uh, he says, some of uh, early scholars, when people used to go to them and asking for hadith, they used to make ghusl and put perfume and change their dress and put aba and sit very nicely and put bukhur because they said, you know, these people are, want, are uh, coming to hear from me hadith of prophets. Wow. So I should make a special setting. Yaqul, uhibbu an u'adhma hadith Rasulullah. Say, man, you adhma sha'ir Allah. So if someone is going to learn from us Quran, hadith, Islam, should be very beautiful setting environment. Uh, at least should not be less than what they uh, you know have in rest of the week <laughs> when they go to their you know public schools you know so this was number one so the first thing was to be prepared plus uh, you know you know present yourself in a nice way with respect etc the second thing is when you leave home for teaching, make du'a. You can make any du'a, but there are also some du'as that are very relevant. Uh, for example, I don't know if you have heard this uh, uh, du'a, which is uh, quoted from the Prophet, yeah. sallallahu that, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika 
أن أضل أو أضل أو أزل أو أزل أو أظلم أو أظلم أو أجهل أو يجهل علي عز جارك وجل ثناؤك ولا إله غيرك Basically, we ask Allah to provide us protection and shelter with respect to few things. An adhillah, to go astray, or to be led astray. Odhallah, I don't want to go astray, I don't want also anyone to lead me to astray. O azillah, azillah with za, zalla with... No, no, with za means, uh, you know, like uh, falling down. Zallat al Ghadam. Yeah. Aw Uzalla. Lapse, yeah, like. Yeah. Aw Azlema, Aw Uzlama. I ask you to protect me from doing Zul or being treated with Zul. Aw Ajahala, Aw Yujhala Alaya. To act as ignorant people or people treat me with ignorance. You know, like ignorant people. Ignorance is not necessarily uneducated, ignorance without aql. The one who is your neighbor is. Very honored, honored, your praise is great, and there is no God but you. Basically, as soon as you leave your home, you um, submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for protection, neither to harm anyone nor to be harmed. Okay, and there are other du'as, for example, Bismillah. حسبي الله تبكلت على الله ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم ثبت جناني please make my heart tranquil stable so that I don't get stressed وأدر الحق على لساني make truth coming from my tongue وَيُدِيمُ ذِكْرَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى إِلَى أَنْ يَسَلَ إِلَى الْمَجْلِسِ So our mentality is that when we are going for teaching is very sacred thing. It's like you are going to, for example, masjid to give lecture. It's like going for dua yukumir or I don't know, laylatul qad. It's such a sacred thing that from the time we leave home, we should be thinking, praying, so that when we get there, we are very mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So we don't look at it like, for example, everyone has a job, my job is to teach. No, this is the job of the prophets. This is the job of the imams. The third thing, when you reach there, you say salam to whoever is there. If your students are there, anyone is there. And you salam ala man hadara idha vasala ila majlis. Sometimes in the past, uh, and still today, uh, classes are held in mosques or shrines. Okay? So he says, when you arrive in Masjid, say to Rak as Salat, Tahiyatul Masjid, before teaching, and you know, ask Allah for prayer. Even if it is not Masjid, you can uh, still say Salat. But sometimes in some environments, maybe it doesn't work, you know. Uh, but if it's possible, this is for gratitude, this is for respect for Masjid, this is for asking Allah for supporting you from mistakes and you know that salat according to the hadith is as salatu khayru mawdu'in what does mawdu mean no mawdu here doesn't mean topic 
means khayruma wudha. The best thing which is legislated, the best thing which is you know designated is salat. Uh, we have this hadith, for example, that Abu Zar says, "Qultu ya Rasul Allah, mas salat." قال خير موضوع فاستكسر أو استقل يعني whether you say it a lot or uh, not a lot but know that it's the best thing which is established or in some versions is الصلاة خير موضوع from Imam Sadiq فمن شاء he quotes from Rasulullah الصلاة خير موضوع فمن شاء استقل ومن شاء استكثر Okay, so for any opportunity, we can say salat, but especially when we want to teach. The fourth is when you sit and yajilisa besakinatin vavakar. You have to teach on your chair. Of course, sometimes you need to walk uh, and stand, go to the board, go around. But in all circumstances, with sakina wa vaqar, you should be very, you know, dignified, in dignified way. You should be not acting like a child or, you know, a, a, you know, comedian or it's, <laughs> you have to be, uh, you know, wa tawazu'in wa Even the way you see it is very important. And you know you should not you know uh, uh, stretch out of your you know leg or things like this. We're very respectful. He says, uh, for example, teacher after teachers maybe with the students relaxes. For example, he says la anna talaba be manzilate awladehi. Okay, when you want, for example, even Jose maybe afterwards we sit you know have a cup of tea. But when you are teaching. It's a very serious thing. When you are a member or a chair or teaching, it's very important, yeah? Even if you are teaching your children, if you are teaching them, I think you have to be careful because uh, if you want to be very relaxed, they don't take it seriously. The next issue is, this is a little bit technical. When you teach, is it better to face Qebla or not to face Qebla? We don't have a specific hadith about this. Some ulama say it's better that the teacher faces qibla. Some say that it's better that the teacher lets students face qibla. Because, no, but we can plan. We have to plan. You know, for example, we plan, you know, how we can get light. We should also plan that at least either the teacher or the students face Qibla. So we don't have a specific hadith, but some ulama say, because facing Qibla in general is good, but now either teacher or students, which one is better? Some say students are more, and it's important that they face Qibla. Uh, we have a discussion also about judge, but uh, I don't want to go to that discussion. Then, it's number six. An yanviya qabla shuru'ihi bal hina khurujihi min manzilihi ta'alim al-ilm wa nashrahu. What is your intention? Maybe your intention is clear for you, but still review it because by the passage of time, you know, sometimes our intention can change. Many times at the beginning, we start something with pure intention, but little by little, other things, you know, get into it. Even as we said uh, before, even if someone is in need of money, but should not say my intention is to get money. Let that be side product. My intention is ta'alimul ilm, nashrul ilm, to spread knowledge. 
بث الفوائد الشرعيه وتبليغ الاحكام الدينيه يو ار انترستد بذ ذيس نوليدج از ات قران از ات اخلاق از احكام از ات هيستوري اند شير ات وذ اذرز ايفن ذوز هو تيتش ساينس اند ماث they should have intention that we want to help these people who are our next generation to, so that we can have better community in future they can have better uh, you know preparation for being good fathers good mothers etc is the other fil ilm bil muzakara wa ilhar as-sawab wa ruju' ila al-haq wa al-ijtima' ala dhikr Allah we want to all be united in remembering Allah, make dua for previous ulama, for previous mu'mineen. These are the things that it should be in our mind. And he says, I don't mean that an yaqul af'alu kaza la ajli kaza, you know. Uh, I teach two hours akhlaq urbatan illallah. <laughs> you don't need to say it, although if you need uh, to prepare you says uh, no problem but because he says sometimes people say these things but they don't mean it it's very important to mean this and allah knows what is happening in our heart number seven an yastaqir ala samtin wahid ma'al imkan jahatan wahid يعني يسون بدنه عن الزحف والتنقل عن مكانه والتقلقل ويديه عن العبث والتشبيك بهما وعينيه عن تفريق النظر بلا حاجة Don't move too much If your movement is to help them you know, Sometimes you know, we move our hands etc. to help them But sometimes You just play with your hand and your head, your beard, your, you know, it's just distracting. A teacher should be dignified, you know. Of course, sometimes it depends also on the uh, age group, and also on the teacher's age. Some people are old, it's difficult for them, yeah. Uh, but uh, One of the things which was very interesting about Imam Khomeini was that when he was lecturing, he was not, yeah, he was not moving or you know uh, playing with his hands or etc. He, he had, despite his age, you know, ability to remain uh, stable. Vayatari kasrat al mizahe wa zehk. Why you shouldn't you know, do? To make too much jokes. A little is good, we will say, but too much. فَإِنَّهُ يُقَلِّلُ الْحَيْبَةِ وَيُسْقِتُ الْحُرْمَةِ If you make too much jokes with your student, you know, especially some people don't have capacity. Mm -hmm. If you say one joke, then they will come on your you know, shoulder. <laughs> yeah. You have to be careful. Yes, exactly. But a little a little humor is good, but not too much. Kama kana Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Rasulullah was sometime making mizah. وَمَنْ بَعْدَهُ مِنَ الْأَئِمَّةِ Okay, imams like Amir al-Mu'mineen used to make sometimes jokes, but not too much. A little is good. تَعْنِيسًا لِلْجُلَسَى وَتَعْلِيفًا لِلْقُلُوبِ تَعْنِيس يعني to make ons, acquaintance. Eight. أن يجلس في مج موضع يبرز وجهه فيه لجميع الحاضرين. Teacher should sit somewhere that all the students and audience can see him or her. Okay. Unfortunately, sometimes uh, some students for the whole year they are put somewhere they cannot see the teacher. 
or some people need you know uh, glasses but they don't know no one understands this yeah yeah that's good but uh, make sure that you give chance to all of them not just some of them just those who are in the front for example or those who are in the very back yaltafitu ilayhim iltifatan khassan bihasab alhajat lilkhita yani you should consider how you should divide your attention and even your look okay you look at all of them not too much you know if you keep you know changing your eyes you know but but you have to divide your look at them yeah so you can see all of not that some people are always you know you look at them some people no And those who ask you something, then of course you need to give more attention to them. Here, there are also some had this in the footnotes, but we don't have time. The next thing is number nine. أن يحسن خلقه مع جلسائه زيادة على غيره. You know, uh, this especially happens uh, when you have adults. For example, you teach adults. Maybe some of them are your friends, your own age. You know, you should have a special regard for them because. These are not, you know, children, <laughs> yeah? And the, or someone can be your aunt, for example, I don't know, or, you know, uh, even older than you. So you have to be careful. If one of them is better, for example, there is one person who is very knowledgeable. We should show respect because of knowledge that that person has. Oh, sinnen. Someone is older. We should pay it. Not six months older, you know. I mean, oh, someone who is older. Oh, sharafen. But not, for example, who is richer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but something which is a virtue. Vayarfa'a majalisahum. How in Imam al Jama'a we have certain criteria, and we say, for example, if this person is alim, is ola, or this is, for example, uh, older, is ola, the same thing. But at the same time, that uh, respects these people, uh, also is very kind with respect to other people. Maybe today when you go, uh, you are not very happy. You receive very bad news or you had, uh, God forbid, you know, some quarrel at home. But when you go to the class, you should forget all these things. Yeah? You shouldn't take that with you to the class. I mean, it's very difficult, but we need to a little bit wait before going to the class and clear your mind, your heart, and with a fresh you know, look, go inside. It's not easy, but we have to. Do it. You also, when the students come, you stand and, of course, this is based on orf. In mm -hmm. some places, maybe this looks odd, you know, but if possible, this is good. In our culture, yeah, for example, when I uh, went to Manchester for my PhD, 
So I was just going from Iran, from Qom, and also Tehran University. Uh, so one of the things I used to do, but no one I think was doing the apartment, I, I never went into any door before my teacher. <laughs> because for us, this is very impolite yeah. that if we go in front of our teacher, you know, when we are walking and we reach a door, the teacher should go first. Oh, yeah. And I had a uh, hard time to talk to him, you know, call him by first name. I was always saying Mr. So-and-so. But in this culture, sometimes uh, it looks odd if you, for example, act like this. So you try to preserve your standards, but uh, not to the extent that people make mockery of you. But if they understand and say this is a respectful person, that's great. Yeah. I think it's something that we could um, draw the attention of the students to, and they'll accept it. Um, my teacher actually taught me something uh, two weeks ago. He said with his students, when he gives them a warning, he taught them to tell him thank you mm -hmm. for the warning. Oh. And I did it with my students last week, and it's actually working. Oh, my God. When you explain that, my warning or reminder to you is to help you <laughs> become on track, so you should be thanking me. Yeah. And they actually took it seriously, and they thank you back. So Very good. They can be taught. Yeah. yeah, this is a very important, and unfortunately, in secular education, they don't pay attention too much to these manners mm -hmm. and these in kind of politeness. But for us, it's very important. And if they learn this in the school, then in other places also they can observe. So, lahum ala sabil al you stand also. A student should also stand, of course, but even teachers should stand up when the students come. And this is not uh, something which is disliked at all. Yeah, but you can encourage them and make this... Uh, common practice, but you cannot force, of course. I think those who actually stand yeah. positive. Um, also, number 10, before you start your actual subject for that day, Shahid Asani says, Start with Ma Tayassara min al Quran al Adim. Start with reading a surah or some ayah, a story or an advice from Quran, something or a reminder. Tayamunan wa tabarrukan. And then followed by dua. That dua which we said was dua when you are leaving home. That was when you leave home. This is not du'a in the classroom. We du'a uh, and du'a for people who are there, for other Muslims. Ista'adha billah min shaitan al-rajim. Ask Allah to give refuge with respect to shaitan. Salawat upon the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt. Praying for previous ulama, for your teachers, for your parents, for those who are uh, in that a school, whoever has donated this, for example, if it is a vat or, you know, endowment or, you know, whoever has contributed to, so that we have this place, because we have to be grateful. We shouldn't take things for granted, yeah? Imagine if every time we use a place, we pray for people who have this, it has lots of blessing for them and also people get encouraged. He says some ulama used to recite Surah A'la before teaching. Yes. Pardon? Bismillah. Of course, Bismillah. 
Number 11, he, ma he mentioned some du'as, but uh, uh, you can, you know, make also other du'as, but he mentions also a very nice du'a here, which Sunnis have also mentioned, Shia have also mentioned, and this is, pardon? Uh, you know, like this du'a that I use in for mutala. Allahumma akhridni min zulumat al wa akrimni min zulumat al wa Allahu ta'ala. Number 11. An yataharra tafhim ad-dars bi-aysara turuq. You should prepare yourself to deliver this subject in the easiest way. Okay? To understand the subject is one thing. How to deliver it is another thing. There are many ulama or teachers, speakers, they don't understand. <laughs> Sometimes you know, there's a topic they don't understand. But there are more maybe who understand. But there is no, you know, clarity. Mm -hmm. Clarity is very important. Even Prophet Musa was concerned. Yeah, said, "Wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli." Or, for example, he said, "You know, send my brother who wa afsahu minni lisana." So, even if you have knowledge, but prepare yourself for very good presentation. Delivery by itself is very important. If someone has both, that's excellent. Knows the subject and knows how to deliver it so that everyone can understand. Some people have this gift that they can present very difficult subjects in the way that everyone can understand. Some they are very knowledgeable, but they can... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, sometimes uh, you, you know, wonder what does he want to say, you know? Talk and talk and talk, but they don't, yeah. they don't understand it, or can we... No, no, you, it's, a, it's a gift, but also it's something that we can, you know, qualify ourselves to receive the gift. So, for example, uh, if you can, before class, you know, take note, you know, I want to say this, but this needs a prerequisite. Mm -hmm. And then organize it. One, two, three. Sometimes maybe examples. Think of good examples. Preparation, Preparation for delivery is very important. Yes. So he says the best words that you can use are those words which are clear. And then if needed, uh, start with the introduction. And put everything in the right order. Mm -hmm. And when you explain it, sakata qalila. Then don't rush to the next issue. Wait, keep silent. Hatta yatakalla man fi nafsihi kalamun alai. So that if any student, anyone in the audience has not understood or has a question or comment or objection, they have time to explain. If you teach religion, aqaid, etc., one of the things that ulama, many ulama have said, you know, Shahid Sani also says, is this. Don't raise a question about religion, you know, something which is problematic. And then say, next session we will answer. Why? Because maybe this person doesn't come next week. Maybe for next week or you know whatever is the next you know period uh, the time, maybe this person gets confused and then asks other people and they give them more confusion. <laughs> yeah. So. First of all, if there are some difficult things, 
many times it's better to address them indirectly. Explain in the way that you avoid even this question. Yeah, you can explain. But if you have to raise it as Q&A, answer and question should come together. And also you must be sure that you are able to clarify because everyone can make a question, but not everyone can answer. There are issues that is, are very difficult. And there are issues that need preparation. Even a great scholar cannot explain everything to someone who is not prepared. So, yadkuruhuma jami'an, aw yu'akhiruhuma jami'an. Either in that play, uh, first session, give the answer, or if there is no time, so don't raise the question. Question and answer in the second session, okay? Especially, siyama, idha kanat dars yajma'ul khassa bal am. Especially in, in your audience, because sometimes, for example, you give lecture, other people also come, you know, uh, in masjid or, you know, a public place. So you don't know the background of these people. Maybe you know the background of your students, but, you know, if other people are there or later are going to, you know, watch it, you have to be careful. Especially someone that you think he may not come back and this shobha remains and becomes fitna. So number 11 was and yataharra tafhim at das ba'i saraturuq wa also especially about shobha we said not to delay the answer. Number 12, sometimes a person teaches different subjects, more than one subject to the same people. Yeah, in your madrasa, maybe you have uh, different teachers for different subjects, I don't know, but sometimes maybe one uh, teacher is for the whole year. For example, it's a year one, this is their teacher, for example. Or ulama, sometimes, you know, they teach uh, fiqh, usul, tafsir, you know, especially in a small city, sometimes you have to teach different. So, you should observe the order, which lesson I should teach first, which one second. There are different factors to observe. One is the significance of the topic, which topic is more important. Another thing is when they are more fresh and bet they have better understanding, yeah? Sometimes if you teach first is better, sometimes no, first is early morning. It's early morning, some people are still, you know, because they didn't have their breakfast, etc. maybe they're very tired. <laughs> so you have to teach difficult subjects later. So you have to observe different things. But everything being equal, then the value of the subject is important. So the most important thing first, if uh, they are you know, able to understand it fresh. For example, he says, Yukadim Usuladin Soma Tafsir Soma al Hadith Soma Usul al Fiqh Soma al Fiqh. If you are teaching religious sciences, Aqa'id is the most important thing. Usuladin is most important. Even he says before Tafsir Usul. Mm -hmm. Because this is how they understand religion and they follow religion, and then other subjects. Order, yes, sure. The order is this. So he says, yuqaddim usul ad-din thumma tafsir thumma al-hadith, because Quran comes before hadith. Thumma usul al-fiqh thumma al-fiqh Summa nahr, el munnah. 
ثم المعاني معاني المبالغه سو ايفن نهف از مور نيسيسري ذان المبالغه وعلى هذا قياس باقي العلوم هي هاز انذر ديسكشن اباوت ذس ليتر نمبر 13 نمبر 13 از also something that i should observe الا يطول مجلسه تطويلا يمله don't make your majlis your gathering your class your session too long don't prolong it so that it makes them bored okay of course uh, sometimes uh, even if you talk five minutes they get bored <laughs> but uh, and nowadays unfortunately uh, people's you know ability to concentrate is very little and you know something that also i like to share that you know alhamdulillah in uh, our tradition in our community we have always had lectures you know for example muharram ramazan maybe half an hour 40 minutes one hour we should not lose these things you know and say you know now we don't need lecture or you know just five minutes you know because the whole thing about you know coming together is to add to our marifa yeah, yeah? unfortunately sometimes it's just you know just we cry and you know do aza and eat and go sometimes in some places who is the speaker is not that important and who is the what we say maddah or zakir or reciter yeah so sometimes they put a big banner that this reciter is reciting here and then it says oh hujjatul islam so and so is a speaker <laughs> this is not right this is like you say you know uh, our food has lots of uh, you know for example uh, a spice and then say you know it's a game but you put you know big you know we have lots of spice for example this is good this is uh, taste this is salt this uh, for the food is good but not that the main thing is okay. the spice because our marifa should increase and even those who are doing recitations they should do it in the way that it helps with the matter of people yeah so we have to uh, observe that these qualities we should not lose it that alhamdulillah we have this habit of listening to majalis this we should preserve it you know the same is you know like uh, food of the body food of the soul yeah. in the past maybe 99 percent we used to eat homemade food yeah we have spent time on preparing on eating together but now it's sandwich you know pizza or you know fast food instant food okay so now some people want to bring this to religion yeah quick 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 what do you want to do yes for attraction of the youths you know we can have short or, or you know different but not that even you know someone with 30 40 50 years old says you know i want something quick and instant Your knowledge needs time you know you have to of course speakers should be very careful as we said for, to prepare themselves you know organize how to deliver so they should benefit but we shouldn't also rush oh. لا يطول مجلسه تطويلا يملهم 
او يمنعهم فهم الدرس او ضبطه sometimes if you prolong it then they don't understand or if they understand they cannot register they cannot you know, preserve ضبط لان المقصود افادتهم وضبطهم yeah you want to benefit them and make them learn something take with themselves خب اذا صاروا الى هذه الحاله فات المقصود on the other hand ولا يقصره تقصيرا يخل ببعد تقريره او ضبطه او فهمه don't make it also too short so that they cannot understand yura'i fi zalika maslahat al hazirin you should observe what's beneficial for these people the audience fil fa'idat wa tatfil wa istifa' al aqsam fi at taqsim when you want to divide things and say no this has you know, two different options etc so find the right balance number 14 alla yashtaghil bi dars wa bihi ma yuz'ajuhu wa yushabbish fikra don't start teaching when you are in a condition that you are and not able to focus and you know you you are under too much pressure for example men marathon if you are very ill and you cannot really understand what you are saying or you are not able to you know do the justice to the job so you, you shouldn't that they teach okay or you are very thirsty first drink water and then or you need to go to washroom say so, you know let me teach in this class also then i go to washroom <laughs> you have to be comfortable when you want to teach okay or you are too sleepy drink something that you know can overcome your sleep or in the night before a sleep well or if for example you are very uh, sad or you are very angry because he says this may lead to not being able to do justice with the subject or you rush you know we have this also about judge if the judge needs uh, to rush for example this judge has a flight to catch okay is hurry you know? he shouldn't judge in that condition because he cannot listen properly or if the judge needs to go to toilet <laughs> yeah you have to be comfortable you have to have you know ability to concentrate it's very important because we are human beings you know if i am in bad mood or i am rushed maybe my mind doesn't work as it should number 15 maybe we can uh, uh, stop here because it's now 7:30 alla yakuna fi majlisihi ma yu'dhil hadirin where you teach should not be something that annoys them you are not annoying them but there is something that annoys them men dukhanen for example you choose a classroom next to the kitchen all the you know a smell of food comes you know <laughs> or next to a bakery o ghobaren ghobar dust او صوت مزعج صوت مزعج او شمس موجبه للحر الشديد sometimes or maybe cold here <laughs> or sometimes you know next to window and sun is making it very hot 
مما او نه بزادک مما یمنع من تعدیت المتو they don't let you to deliver properly you, know, to, you cannot reach your aim when your students are annoyed or distracted try to choose a place that is uh, if, as much as possible big enough so that everyone relaxes uh, temperature uh, sound light everything is suitable oh, this is the first 15 things inshallah we will continue inshallah next alhamdulillah <laughs> rabbil you can carry on, but they need the sound downstairs to go online. You need a question, and then you can continue. Without, without, without the mic, uh, they, they want to go. I think one hour, maybe it's enough. I just have a question. Uh, is it possible? To sure, ask? sure. Uh, so, regarding the ninth aspect, and Alhamdulillah, we have also eight sisters here. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Oh, Online? Online. Online. On Zoom, yes. We say salam to the sisters who are on Zoom, or maybe some are brothers. <laughs> yes. Best one. So regarding the ninth aspect, Shaykh, how is this applicable in a, in a classroom? You know, sometimes you... you for example, go in uh, before the students, mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, students Come. keep coming, especially in you know, masjid or in a community setting. Maybe someone comes a few minutes earlier, some on you know, three minutes, some two minutes. So when they come, you should not ignore them as if no one has come, you know. Mm -hmm. You show respect, you know, welcome, salam alaikum, and um, uh, I don't mean about the actual qiyam, but uh, isn't it, or did I understand wrong? So uh, isn't it, it wasn't it like classifying uh, uh, according to their sin or or So, for example, sometimes uh, there are 50, 60 people, for example, uh, an alim is teaching, for example, a muallim. Among them, there are some people who are older, for example. Okay. It's not like class uh, in the school that are the same age. Okay. So those who are older, you show them respect and come, please come forward, you know. So it's not a classroom. Yes. So I was just making sure that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One of the brothers watching said, please give the, our classmates a mic so we can hear their questions. Uh -huh, yes. Uh -huh. Maybe next time. Yes. yes, inshallah, next time we will uh, make sure that the questions are heard. Yes, thank you. Just this number six, please. Yes. Can you sum up 15? Yeah, I did. 15 or 16? And I put it from the disability of the Yeah. And yeah. I'm confused between what I'm saying. I think missing here. The delay is why you're teaching. And Yan, before you go out, uh, you review in your mind why I am going to teach. Yeah, why I am going to do this? So review your intention and try to purify it, refine it. Mm. Even if you are sure your niya is good, but still, as I said, passage of time sometimes can affect our niya. Yeah, let me see if there is any question here. Uh, Sister Sokaina uh, says salam and thanks. And then she says the number of children with special needs is increasing. Yeah. And many teachers are unable or find it difficult to adjust themselves to children who need extra support and patience. Some children are not diagnosed but are judged and teachers are teachers refer to them as being 
not yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes, this is also very important, and uh, of course, dif different countries have different you know rules. Some countries have a special schools. Some countries prefer that they are in the normal schools. But certainly those with special needs need to receive more attention, but without sacrificing the rest of the class. But you need to have a special attention for those who have uh, more need. Or special referral, for example, yeah. referral, for point Yes. Out. And sometimes they have in their school assistance uh, for yes, teachers. Well, to... Because they're not diagnosed. If we're going to talk about like mainstream schools, you know, if they're diagnosed, then that's that's not going to pay because they'll have an action plan on the plan where everything's yeah. in place for them to bring them out of the classroom where the assistant can work with them like even the public but in our environment in school this is not possible so what we do we tend to give them let's say a few fewer time let's say that the criteria is a bit less than other kids so yeah more time to so you consider their yeah. capacity your expectations uh, should be adjusted to their capacity and also maybe sometimes you spend extra time outside the class yes. or maybe ask someone who is better in the class to help with them uh, help them and work with them yes but uh, what is important is again balance if you ignore them is not good and if you give 100% attention to the needy ones it's not also yeah. right you have to find the balance also there is a uh, question about uh, can you advise on how children and management should be altered so uh, this is also important because different teachers have different capabilities and you know uh, we say in farsi uh, each flower has a specific fragrance oh, yeah. Yeah. So every flower has its own fragrance yeah so uh, as management of the school we should see whether these for example people in this class is better for them to just work with this teacher or we give them chance to benefit from different so uh, I say goodbye and inshallah we uh, will meet inshallah again in two weeks.